Hey, this video shall be about Denby's Wine Estate. It will be split into six parts. The first being about the history of Denby's Wine Estate. The second about primary jobs on the estate, such as grape farming. The third about secondary jobs, such as wine making. The fourth about tertiary jobs, such as working at the, the hotel slash restaurant. The fifth about the geography of Denby's. And last, but of course not least, I will be covering the topic of the Lego house that was constructed by James May and a team of builders on his documentary Toy Stories. There will be timestamps on the screen now, so feel free to skip to any of these times. Now, after that long and repetitive introduction, let's begin. To begin with, Denby's Wine Estate was not a vineyard, winery, nor called Denby's. At the beginning of the land's history, it was a farmhouse owned by John Denby. In 1734, it was purchased by Jonathan Tyers, the owner of Vauxhall Gardens in London, and was quickly turned into a weekend retreat. The house that he built turned out not to have been of much significance architecture-wise, but the Gothic gardens that he built did turn out to gain a little bit of notoriety, despite it not being around for a long time. Following Tyers' death in 1767, the estate was bought by Lord King of Ockham, and the grim artefacts that Jonathan Tyers had installed, including two stone coffins topped with human skulls, were removed. About 20 years later, in 1787, a wealthy banker named Joseph Denison purchased the estate, and it stayed in the Denison family until 1849, when it passed to a man who was considered to be a master builder called Thomas Cubitt. At the time, Thomas Cubitt was working on Osborne House for Queen Elizabeth and Prince Albert. I think this pretty much assures us of the fact that he was a pretty good builder. The mansion that he designed to replace the old one at the estate was essentially a more modest version of Osborne House. It was still a substantial building though, housing almost 100 rooms on just three stories. Unfortunately, a combination of inheritance tax and the difficulty of maintaining such a large estate during the Second World War drove the Cubits to begin selling pockets of land. The mansion was abandoned until its eventual demise in 1953 when it was demolished. The remaining 635 acres were put on market in 1984 and eventually bought by Bywater, a water treatment company. About two years later, the chairman of Bywater, Adrian White, established Denby's Wine Estate using 268 acres of south-facing land to plant grapevines. Primary jobs are known, in geography, as jobs that involve collecting raw materials from the natural environment. Some examples of these jobs include mining, farming, or fishing. Now, in Denby's, the primary, primary job is grape farming. This includes harvesting, fertilizing, and I think you get the point. The strange thing about the grape farming process at Denby's is that picking grapes is something that you can literally pay to do. Adrian White had the actually really smart idea of allowing people to pay to come onto Denby's and harvest grapes for him, allowing him to make extra money from each harvest. An issue that has most likely taken produce from Denby's is the wildlife that live in the area that the vineyard has been built. A lot of the animals that inhabit the local area, most commonly deer, badgers, rabbits, and pesky birds, would be able to take a large amount of grapes that are grown if it weren't for the precautions that have been taken to keep these animals out, except from the badgers. Denby's not legally allowed to do anything against them. To stop deer and rabbits from entering the vineyard, fencing has been constructed around the area to try and prevent these pesky creatures from getting to the grapes. For birds, there have been ultrasonic bird repellers placed throughout the vineyard, which pretty much emit sound that cannot be heard by humans but can be by birds, which sounds like gunshots, which scares the birds away. It isn't the most bird-friendly way of dealing with the problem, but when they tried placing discs around the farm instead, people complained that they would shine light at their eyes, so the discs were taken down. To allow for better harvest, old vines are cut down and replaced, allowing for the new vines to grow and produce larger quantities of the grapes the old ones would have been able to. One more thing for this section is botrytis. Botrytis is a, get ready for this, helpful disease that grapes can get, unless you get one of the many bad forms of botrytis. It pretty much means that once crushed, the grapes will produce a syrup instead of juice. The syrup can be bottled up and sold for quite a lot of money. Secondary jobs involve making or manufacturing things, for example, making cars or steel. The example of a secondary job at Denby's is winemaking, also known as vinification. This takes place in the winery, and there are about five basic stages to the winemaking process. Stage 1 is all about primary fermentation. To begin fermentation, yeast may be added. After primary fermentation of red grapes, 
The free run wine is pumped off into tanks, while the remaining juice is extracted from the grape skin. The pressed wine is blended with the free run wine at the winemaker's discretion. The wine is kept warm and the remaining sugars are converted into alcohol and carbon dioxide. The next process is malolactic conversion, which sounds a lot more complicated than it really is. This is the process of turning tart tasting malic acid, which is already present in grape juice, into lactic acid, which tastes a lot softer. Red wine is often transported to oak barrels to mature over periods of weeks or months. This imparts oak aromas and some tannin into the wine. The time from harvesting to drinking wine can vary from a few months to over 15 years. Only about 10% of red wine will taste better after 5 years than one, however. The vinification process can vary depending on what type of wine you are making. For example, champagne has an extra fermentation inside the bottle. This dissolves trapped carbon dioxide, creating characteristic bubbles. Tertiary jobs consist of providing a service, so for example, vets, doctors and cashiers are examples of tertiary jobs. On Denby's, another way of making money, as grapes aren't harvestable all year round, is by running a small hotel on the vineyard. Some examples of tertiary jobs at Denby's are cleaners and reception staff. There are also tertiary jobs in the main building. For example, there is a cafe that serves hot food, so they will need people to work in the kitchen, bring people their food and sell the food to the customers at the desk. There is also a shop that requires cashiers, and occasionally there are events held at Denby's. One of my personal memories of something fun that happened in the main building was when there was a room that had an amazingly large amount of Lego bricks inside that kids, and adults if they were feeling it, could just go and play with. This was about eight years ago, so I was all about the Lego, am I right? The geographical aspects of Denby's are vast. They range from the direction of slopes to what's underneath the vines, which, by the way, is a layer of chalk, which is good for grapevines to grow on, as there are small holes in the chalk that allows water to flow through it. There is a large, steep, south-facing hill on the vineyard, which is optimal for vine growing, as it gets maximum sunlight from the day. There is also chalk underneath the slope, which improves the quality even further. To go even further, there is a barrier of trees that protects the wines from the eastern winds. Around the vineyard, there are different areas for different types of wine. There are chalkless areas, chalky areas, sloped areas, and windy areas. Each is right for a different type. And now, finally, I can talk about James May's Lego House. James May's Lego House was featured in his documentary Toy Stories. Toy Stories was about trying to prove that old-fashioned toys are still relevant. In episode 5, James was testing out whether or not he could build a working house out of Lego bricks. He decided to do this in the vineyard. He'd originally agreed to sell the house to Legoland afterwards, but by the time the house was built, Lego opted out, as prices would have been unbelievably high to transport the house to Legoland at Windsor. Whilst the house was being built, different problems would arise around the house, so they would have to combat them while constructing the building, which was two stories. After Lego refused to buy the house, there was an attempt to sell it publicly to anyone who wanted it, and had enough money and space to keep it, of course. Eventually, after no one bought it, it was knocked down, scattering Lego bricks around the area. As Lego doesn't degrade well, you can still find remnants of the house around the area, hidden in the plant life around. Here are two things that I didn't really know how to fit in, but I feel are relevant. First of all, Denby's is located in Surrey, which is a good place, as a lot of wealthy people live in Surrey and chalk is made up of thousands of small, dead, and fossilized cre sea creatures from millions of years ago, which is why it is so brittle and porous. Well, I hope this was informational. I suddenly put a very long time into researching the things I put into this. There shall be a bibliography in the description with links to all of the websites that I used. Anyway, goodbye.